Hi, uh, today I am going to be talking about Zero Join, uh, which is a privacy oriented protocol for blockchains. Uh, first, a little bit about myself. So, I am one of the core developers of the Ergo platform, and I am associated with Ergo since its development phase. Uh, so, I am mostly from a research background in cryptography, and uh, one of my interests uh, was privacy in financial transactions, uh, which is where this work comes from. So this is joint work with Alex, uh, he is one of the founders of Ergo and uh, regarding the protocol as the name suggests uh, it's a combination of zero coin and coin join which are also both privacy oriented protocols for blockchains. So uh, at a very abstract level zero join can be thought of as a, as a combination of the two and uh, after this talk I hope that you will also be convinced of this. So. Uh, before we move on, let me make it clear that this protocol works only in the UTXO model. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of protocols that work only in the UTXO model, such as uh, ZeroCoin and CoinJoin, both protocols on which uh, our protocol is based on. Uh, and it won't uh, work uh, very easily for account-based uh, systems such as Ethereum, right? Mm. And uh, what do we mean by privacy? So, uh, privacy can be roughly defined as, as a kind of unlinkability. So, in this diagram, suppose Alice is uh, one of the senders of a message to Bob and a lot of people are sending such messages and uh, there are different receivers, right? But for Alice, the receiver is Bob, right? And then uh, when we look at the message that Bob received, probability that some outsider can guess that this was the sender was Alice. Uh, should be less than 1 over 2 to the k for some security parameter k decided by Alice, right? So that is roughly what we would like to get uh, from privacy. Uh, let me also quickly summarize what is the current state of the art and why we need uh, a new protocol. So the four parameters that I am going to be considering here are uh, uh, as shown. Uh, there are many parameters but uh, these are the major ones that uh, that are uh, discussed when we dis when we consider efficiency and uh, scalability. So one of the first things that we consider is whether the protocol requires a monotonic UTXO set. Uh, so this is a UTXO set is something that must be stored in memory for a for a full node to verify transactions. Right? It is not the blockchain. A blockchain is uh, uh, stored on disk, not in memory. While a UTXO set must be stored in memory. So uh, if a protocol requires the UTXO set to increase uh, monotonically. Uh, basically that means that it never goes down the size always increases then this has scalability issues right and there are certain uh, privacy protocols that actually require this uh, property which i'll uh, get to very soon so uh, zero coin is one of them and monero is also one of them so monero is also uh, one of the uh, one of very popular privacy protocol but it has this issue of having a monotonic utxo set additionally i am also considering a very basic variant of monero because monero has evolved over, over the years so the current version of Monero also uh, uses range proofs and uh, generic non interactive zero knowledge proofs. So even the uh, third column here would be yes in the latest version of Monero. So anyway, for this uh, monotonic UTXO set, we have uh, issue that it is not scalable because the memory requirements keep increasing as we as the blockchain grows, right? Uh, the second parameter that I'm going to consider is whether there is an interaction needed between the participants, right? So the only protocol that has this issue is CoinJoin and uh, the main reason uh, CoinJoin is not that popular is because of this uh, drawback, right? Otherwise, it's a very efficient protocol and it provides decent privacy. Uh, the third parameter that I'm going to look at is whether the protocol needs uh, generic uh, non-interactive zero-knowledge proofs uh, slash range proofs. So range proofs are a type of generic NIZK anyway, anyways. So if the protocol needs these kind of proofs, then also this protocol is not good because it is uh, this such proofs are very large and uh, take a long time to verify also. So the size is kilobytes and the verific verification time is several milliseconds or more. Uh, uh, finally, we will also look at whether the protocol is susceptible to something called an eavesdropping attack. Yeah. So what this means is that uh, if, if uh, an attacker is listening to all the messages sent between the nodes, right? Uh, not the blockchain, but uh, as the nodes are talking to each other uh, uh, within the protocol, and if the attacker is able to listen to those messages, then he is able to break the privacy. Then this is uh, this protocol is also not uh, very useful, right? So certain protocols are vulnerable to this, and we want to have a protocol that is not uh, susceptible to eavesdropping attack. So if we see, then 
uh, zero join is one of the protocols that has no in all of these columns. So it is one of the protocols that is uh, highly practical uh, in in uh, in the privacy uh, sector. Uh, and if I've missed any protocols, please let me let me know. So this is the current state of the art that I could uh, gather, and let me know if any more need to be added here. Uh, also, let me know if any other uh, column should be uh, added in this uh, analysis. Right. So moving on, let's get to the protocol systems. Right. So one of the protocols that uh, zero join is supposed to be based on is coin join. Right. So let me quickly discuss coin join. Coin join is a protocol uh, developed for Bitcoin. But uh, it is a very generic protocol. It is basically just requires that the blockchain be UTXO based, right? So here I am using ERG as the currency, which is the currency of the Ergo blockchain, and I will be using Ergo blockchain as the as the basis for all my examples henceforth. So here, what has what happens is that each box. So here a box is like a UTXO, right? So uh, I will also use the terms box and UTXO interchangeably, right? So this uh, uh, this diagram shows that there are boxes of one ERG each, and uh, uh, this is a coin join transaction uh, we see that the two uh, inputs have this dotted line which indicates that the owners of these inputs need to interact in an off-chain uh, manner and uh, once they interact they jointly form a transaction and then together they broadcast the transaction to the blockchain so the transaction that is broadcast is this one which uh, which contains two boxes uh, which are kind of indistinguishable in the sense that uh, one of them belongs to the uh, left owner and one of them belongs to the right owner, but not necessarily in the uh, the same order. And it is uh, impossible for an outsider to decide uh, which box belongs to whom. But one belo belongs to one of the input holders and the other belongs to the other. And uh, this process is repeated multiple times so that the privacy is achieved to the desired level. Yeah. So each transaction kind of uh, very informally gives you 50% privacy, right, or 50% undrinkability. Uh, so looking at this transaction, we can only guess. 50% with a 50% chance whether Alice is the sender or not. Similarly, uh, this process is repeated. So each time this process is repeated, we have to multiply that by 50%, right? So after two transactions, the probability of uh, unlinkability becomes 25%, right? And so on. And this is the kind of the canonical variant of coin join, which I'll be using. So only two at a time uh, and multiple rounds. Uh, and now let's discuss what zero uh, zero coin is uh, based on. So zero coin is similar to uh, uh, coin join in the sense that it also has one or boxes. So the boxes are of the same amount. And uh, let's look at uh, zero join protocol zero coin protocol from uh, individual perspective. Right? So let's look at this uh, one transaction here. Yeah. So what happens is that somebody deposits one or to the zero uh, coin pool. So this is uh, a pool that we call the unspent pool, right, or the U pool. So somebody deposits one ERG box to the U pool, and uh, many people do that, right. So let's say there are now five people who have deposited uh, such boxes, right. And uh, later on, say uh, now I want to remove this box from the pool, right. When I spend the box, I have to remove it from the pool. That's the idea. But uh, I'm not actually removing it per se. I'm just kind of emulating the removal, right. Uh, I'll get to that. What that means in a minute. So here, this this is say the transaction that I am doing. Yeah. So basically, this is the removed box, and then once the box is removed, I am going to spend it like a normal box, right? So the idea is that now the link between these two boxes has to be broken, right? So because the link has to be broken, I cannot uh, directly reveal that I am removing this box, right? I am going to reveal that in an indirect way, right? So this box uh, cannot be removed because the moment I remove it, I am revealing that, right? So this box stays in the pool, and instead, when I do this transaction, what I am doing is I am going to give a zero knowledge proof that uh, this is a valid box right this is one of the box that is in the pool without revealing which box right so this zero knowledge proofs uh, kind of let me lets me prove that uh, the box i'm removing removing exists in this pool right without revealing which box it is right but then what will stop me from doing the same process again and again right i can keep spending this again and again right if there is no way to link these two so this is link is also kept in an indirect way right so instead of re revealing the box itself i reveal some other uh, uh, commitment of the box right some sort of a serial number of the box and this box this serial number is stored now in this uh, s pool right so uh, knowing the serial number does not uh, reveal which of the boxes in the pool right because the, the box itself contains the serial number in an encrypted manner right so there is no direct way to link the serial number to the box here but what happens is that uh, now the serial number is stored in this pool permanently 
So next time I cannot follow the same procedure, right? That apply the zero knowledge proof and try to remove the box again because then the serial number is already stored from a previous removal, right? So this will prevent uh, double spending. So what this tells us now is that uh, this pool must never uh, remove boxes. So this is monotonically increasing pool. Similarly, now this pool is also monotonically increasing because uh, I, I should never remove the serial number, right? Uh, to keep to allow checking in the future. So this causes uh, basically the issue that I was discussing, right? That we have to have a monotonically increasing UTXO set in memory. So this is what uh, that UTXO set is, right? These two pools. So how can we kind of solve this problem, right? The idea is that uh, it doesn't really make sense to store everything indefinitely, right? So consider for example this, yeah? Suppose that uh, some everybody stops using uh, zero coin, uh, it loses interest, right? So after five uh, box are deposited in the U pool, uh, no more deposits happen, right? For a long time. And then people keep withdrawing and then this, um, eventually this top pool ends up having five boxes, right? Here, five serial numbers. So what this tells us that uh, is that uh, all boxes have been removed from the U pool, right? Even though we don't know which boxes, which all the boxes have been removed. So this allows us to kind of empty the both the pools, right? Once uh, so the logic is that once uh, both the pools have the same number of elements, we can quickly empty them and then refresh it, right? Uh, so let me you know th uh, let us now think of a protocol that works like this, right? So we kind of stop at five. We allow only five boxes in the U pool, and then we wait for the S pool to again have five boxes. And the moment it has five boxes, we uh, purge both pools, right? And uh, uh, now you will say that, uh, but I want higher privacy, right? I am only getting one out of five here, while zero coin gives me a lot more, right? So then this process can be repeated, right? That's what I would suggest. So you do five at a time, then you do five at uh, another time, and keep repeating it until you are sure that until you have the desired level of privacy, right? So in now the question is why five, right? Why not six or why not four or why not twenty? Why pick only five, right? So it can be any number in fact, right? Uh, we can just choose the any number that we want. But uh, for the sake of simplicity and uh, uh, efficiency, we will choose the smallest possible number, right? Which is two, right? So we'll do two at a time and uh, then we'll repeat the process. Uh, uh, so it will be kind of a zero coin variant, but the both the U pool and S pool contain only two elements. And one, once both the pools have the same number of elements, they're emptied, right? That's the logic we are going to follow now. So using this, we can come up with a hypothetical protocol that I call two coin for now, which is basically what I said earlier in a in a, a more diagrammatic form, right? So each of this stage, right? Let's look at these uh, four boxes here. So this is one transaction where there are two inputs and two outputs, and this is one zero coin uh, stage with two uh, inputs, and uh, this is the second stage and this is the third stage. So you can keep doing as you want. And if some people may say, okay, I'm, I'm done, I'm just gonna withdraw. So this is this person, for example, has withdrawn, right? But we don't know which of these two has has been withdrawn, right? It is, uh, it could be either of them, right? So the, the dotted lines represent the first person spending. It could be any of them. And the, uh, and the full line represents the second person spending, which could also be the, which could be the other one. Uh, and uh, this is what we just, uh, call it uh, hypothetically call it two coin right because it is two at a time and so uh, moving on uh, let me just look uh, zoom down into the two coin primitive right two at a time right what happens when uh, uh, what happens at the fundamental level in a in a two coin right so alice uh, adds the box to the two pool uh, i'm just going to call it the two pool and bob uh, adds a box to the two pool right and at some point one of them right we don't know which one uh, one of alice or bob uh, decides to pick up his box or her box and then the other box right? which could be uh, a or b and then using this he spends he or she spends it once to generate o1 which is the first spend and later on the other participant says okay fine now uh, i've already do i'm already logged with the other spender let me also spend it uh, on a need basis so when the second participant needs he will spend the other box uh, he will spend the second uh, he will spend the both boxes the second time and generate another box right and one thing to notice that all the four boxes are part of the pool right so uh, the boxes are spent uh, from the pool and added back to the pool right so it, the transactions are pool to pool right that's one thing to note here and the privacy comes from the fact that it is uh, not possible to distinguish uh, o0 and o1 in the sense that whether it belongs to a or b right uh, that's the privacy here uh, so another protocol that is very similar to zero join is quiz quiz right which is uh, also a, also a privacy enhancing protocol for utxo blockchains and it is one of the protocols that 
actually does not have a monotonic UT exocyte, right? So uh, I'm d I'm going to discuss a very basic variant of Quiscus. Quiscus uh, has many more uh, enhancements in uh, from this basic variant, such as using range proofs, which we which, which would won't need. So the basic variant of Quiscus is very similar to zero join, right? And it has uh, it is also very similar to the two coin uh, primitive, right? So in the two coin, what happens is that Alice and Bob both add box to the pool. So here also the same thing happens, but here I'm just going to call it Q pool, right? For Quiz Quiz instead of two pool. So Alice and Bob both add uh, a box each to the Q pool, and then uh, earlier uh, both Alice or Bob spend it as and when needed, right? But here there is slight difference, right? What happens is that one of them spends the box together. Uh, with the other and he generates two boxes so uh, uh, say alice decides to spend uh, both these boxes so alice when will generate one box for herself and the other for Bo bobia yeah, at the same time so we don't know which of o0 or o1 belongs to alice but the logic is that one of alice or bob will be able to spend o0 or o1 and the other will be able to spend the other box without uh, revealing which one belongs to whom and both boxes are distinguished to outsiders. So the only difference from quiz quiz and uh, the only difference between quiz quiz and two coin in this structure is that the boxes are created uh, in two coin as and when needed, right? Not in advance. While in quiz quiz, these two boxes are created in advance. Uh, these two boxes are created at the same time, even though the other spender doesn't need to use them immediately, right? That is the only difference. But it's a minor difference and it doesn't really affect the overall uh, uh, theory behind the protocol, right? So now let's look at zero join, which is also very very similar to the previous two structures, but with some small tweaks, right? So let me describe that. Yeah. So the first part is very similar, right? Alice will add a box to the pool. So this kind of represents uh, shows that it's a pool, right? And uh, Alice has added a box to it, and Bob will spend Alice's box along with one of his own. Uh, to generate two similar boxes, O0 and O1, right? Again in advance. So even though Alice doesn't need them, uh, Alice's box will also be generated, right? And we don't know which belongs to whom, right? We know that one of them belongs to Alice and the other to Bob. And uh, another thing, notice that neither of the, uh, any of the three boxes are uh, part of the pool. Only Alice's box is part of the pool. The other three boxes are not part of the pool, right? That is another thing to note here. So what will happen is that, suppose we want to uh, reuse the protocol again, O0, for example, will have to be added to the pool again. Right, so it will need one more extra transaction. But the other interesting thing to note here is that uh, in the mixed transaction, right, uh, in the mixed transaction, only one of the boxes is from the pool, the other box is not from the pool, right. So in, in that case, if a remix is done, only 50% of the times we will need to add to the pool, the other 50% of the time we can kind of take Bob's role and use it directly in a mixed transaction, right. So that is the basic idea of a zero join primitive. and. Uh, I'll just quickly summarize the differences between uh, those similarities and the differences between zero join and quiz quiz, right? So the similarity is that uh, both have these same structure of having four uh, boxes where two inputs and two outputs of equal value and uh, outputs are such that uh, it is not possible for an outsider to, to distinguish which belongs to A and which belongs to B, right? So that is the basic idea and both protocols have a technique for allowing uh, such thing to happen right so the uh, protocols allow a to add a box to the pool and allow b to kind of spend a uh, and generate two boxes in uh, in a manner that i just described right and uh, the above most of the time above will work uh, the technique works assuming that bob follows certain rules right so we call this honest but curious so if bob is honest but curious then the protocol works properly but if bob is cheating then the protocol breaks right uh, the security breaks for example bob may be able to generate two boxes such that uh, uh, they become unspendable by Alice, right? So Alice will end up losing funds, for example, right? So the rest of the protocol in, in both Quizquiz and Zero-One is then uh, uh, based on, is, is uh, designed to ensure that Bob cannot do this, right? So basically what the protocol requires in both these uh, approaches is that Bob must prove through a zero-knowledge proof that he has created O0 and O1 correctly. And the differences lie in the way these zero-knowledge proofs are constructed, right? So in quiz quiz, uh, they use generic uh, non-interactive zero knowledge proofs, right? Which have the same issue that it, it, are, it is very large and uh, very slow and not very practical, right? While uh, zero join uses Sigma protocols, uh, so which are very efficient, which are basically using modular exponentiation uh, or exponential elliptic curve groups and it only needs eight exponentials to verify, right? Uh, so you will see later. So this is kind of the summary of the uh, two protocol and the, the similarity of the differences.